Hello everyone and welcome to Chobham Academy Geography Department's case study video for Lagos, our LIDC city case study for our Urban Futures unit. I hope that you enjoy. In this video, we'll be covering these five areas uh, for Lagos. Let's start by looking at Lagos's location and importance. Firstly, Lagos is a huge city. It's actually the biggest city in Africa ahead of Cairo. It has a population of 21 million and is the, one of the fastest growing urban areas in the world. And this is grown by over 500,000 people a year. Now, Lagos has a GDP of over $136 billion. It accounts for over 60% of all industrial and commercial ventures in Nigeria. So this makes it incredibly important for the country itself, helping with exports and imports. Now, a 2015 report by The Economist states that annually Lagos generates $90 billion in goods and services. Let's put this into perspective. So if Lagos was a country, its economy would be number seven in Africa, making it bigger than that of Kenya, Cote d'Ivoire, and Ghana. Lagos experiences a high influx of people every year. As mentioned already, 500,000 people enter the city every year. Now, the reason for this is as follows. Lagos has better jobs than anywhere else in Nigeria. Incomes are about four times higher than those in rural areas. Large numbers of migrants come from the rural areas each year to gain better jobs and to experience a better standard of living in Lagos. But it's not just migrants from in the country, it's also international migration. So from countries like Niger and Jad, people do come and enter Lagos. If we think further afield, there are countries like the USA, UK and China, whose people come over that are employed by foreign businesses operating in Lagos. Now, this has impacted the city's character. If you think back to its origins as a small fishing uh, settlement inhabited by the Yoruba people, it is now a very diverse population with people from each ethnic group within Nigeria, as well as many different nationalities. But, and we'll come on to this a bit later in the video, it's become overcrowded, congested and polluted. So it's created some challenges along its way. So Lagos has some distinctive ways of life. Firstly, you start by looking at Afrobeat. This is a very popular music style that originates from Nigeria, particularly Lagos, and has become well known worldwide with artists such as Wizkid becoming incredibly popular. Now, this is incredibly important for Lagos as it defines the city, but also brings in much income and creates a lot of jobs. This is also the case for Nollywood. So this is effectively Nigeria's own version of Hollywood, which has produced films and TV series that are watched over by not only Nigerians, but people from across the world. And this, again, brings in a lot of income for the city and helps grow grows identity but also the city's economy. So a city with 21 million people cannot escape having its challenges, and Lagos certainly has its challenges, one of which is its waste disposal. And with such a huge population, it produces a lot of waste. This is approximately 9,000 tonnes per day. But what's the big problem is only 40% of this rubbish is officially collected. And there are large rubbish dumps such as Olusosun, which contains toxic waste and produces some dangerous gases. So the problem with this now is that they have a challenge of dealing with their waste. Otherwise, it causes a lot of environmental, social and economic problems. With such a high number of people coming to the city, this then leads to the creation of squatter settlements, or also known as slums. Now, the most famous one in Lagos is called Makoko, the floating slum. Now, in Makoko, houses are built on stilts on the lagoon. These are illegally built, so people face eviction if slums are demolished to clean up the city. In Makoko, there's only one primary school, and many families cannot afford to send their children to school. As well, 
Communal toilets are shared by 15 households and most of the waste goes straight into the lagoon below. It's always full of rubbish and raw sewage. Now, water can be bought in Makoko from a communal water point, but that is up to three kilometres from some homes. And the only electricity comes from illegal connections that often cut out. Finally, there are high levels of crime in Makoko, and the slum is patrolled by gangs called area boys who both commit crimes and act as informal police in the slum. So one initiative that Lagos has put together to become more sustainable is the Lagos State Integrated Waste Management Project. So where waste still ends up in rubbish dumps, the government aims to generate electricity from it by burning the methane released. This is already happening at Okosi Fruit Market, where electricity generated from rotting fruit is used to provide lighting for the market. A larger scale project is also underway at the landfill site of Olusosun. Pipes are being placed into the rubbish to collect the methane so that it can be taken to generators. The electricity generated will be used to power the dump, which is open 24 hours a day. So a bit of exam practice. So a question you could expect that you would use this case study for would be for an LIDC city you have studied, explain the importance of the city within its country and the wider world. Now, what I've done is I've given to you a model PED paragraph that you could use to answer this question. However, have a go at what your second paragraph would be. Hint, it would be about the importance of Lagos on an international scale. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.